On this video, we're gonna talk about the five step process to scaling your photo business to $100,000 plus per month. Now, this is a pretty big goal, but I think something that is much more achievable for a photography business than most people think. People get into the photography industry and we're told all these things about the photography industry that makes us think that even a $10,000 photo business is like a top achievement. And all I'm saying in this video is that you can do better. I'm not knocking a 10 or $15,000 a month photo business, but I am saying that there is no limit on how big you can grow your business and the industry doesn't really change that. Some industries may be easier than others to grow, but I often think that's just comparison from some place where you don't know and stuff looks better to a place you know and then you know it's hard, right? So you overemphasize how hard it is in your current industry and think that others have it easier and scaling a business is all the same. It's a game of maximizing your profits. You have money to reinvest, you have money to hire, so you have money to get new clients and overall be able to grow your business. And so on this video, I'm gonna break that down into a five-step process that I would recommend following if you decide to scale your photo business. The first thing to consider when you're deciding whether or not to scale your photo business is why you want to scale in the first place. And I know that question may seem very basic and the reason for most people is usually just make more money, but I'm here to tell you that that is not what you're gonna do with scaling at least over the short term. So when you first decide to scale your business, here's what's probably going to happen. You're gonna get your business to 12, 13, 14, 15K a month or whatever you get to as a single photographer with very low expenses. Maybe 80% of that is profit. So you're making, let's just call it $11,000 a month on a 13 or $14,000 a month business. You start thinking, hey, I'm getting a little busy here. Hey, I have a little more money than I made in my corporate job or whatever. And you're like, I really wanna keep making more and I wanna grow my income. And so the most simple way to do that is to scale my business. And that is true over the long term. If you're considering a three to seven year term, your goal is to make more money in that amount of time, scaling is definitely gonna be the way to do that. Because if you have a $10,000 a month in revenue business, there's no way for you to make $20,000 a month. It's just not there. But on the other hand, if you have a $50,000 a month business, you probably will be able to make $20,000 a month. And so a lot of people just think, hey, I have to grow my top line, that's all that matters. And while it is true that you have to have a big enough top line to support a bottom line, that is not the only thing to focus on. Here's what I would consider. You need to really think about what your goal is over the next 12 to 36 months, so one to three years. It, during that time, are you wanting to make as much money as possible because of life circumstance or whatever you have, or are you willing to say, I will take a pay cut from my current 10K a month earnings to make six or 7K, or maybe less sometimes, in order to three plus years out make more money? That's the decision you should be considering because when you scale your business, almost everybody we've seen, in fact, everybody that we've worked with through this process has made less money during the process. And usually when that happens is when they come to us, they start scaling their business, they realize they're not making as much money, they're like, what am I doing wrong? And that's the first question they have and we're like, nothing. That's just how it goes. What you are doing is taking that profit that you could have taken in your pocket and you're investing it in your business and just like any investing, you invest it and the return is not immediate, right? It takes time to grow. And so with business, you can obviously speed this up by doing more effective work and by doing more work, as long as it remains effective, you can make that happen faster, but there's still a period where it is costing you money. It's not gonna be linear. Meaning if you're making 13K revenue and 10K profit, when you hire somebody, you're not just gonna go straight to 20K revenue and 14K profit. Like it's not going to work like that. You're gonna scale it up. You're gonna get fully booked out. You're gonna hire people. Your income's gonna drop for a period of time who knows how long that is, 12 to 36 months. And then as you hire more and more people, you're probably gonna have three or four or five photographers at the point where you're making more, maybe 15 or 20 grand a month net. So there's this middle period that a lot of people don't consider. And the biggest thing I can encourage you to do is know why you're scaling. If you wanna make more money over the next 10 years, you should probably scale. If you wanna make more money over the next two to three years, you should probably not scale. You should refine your operations, become as efficient as possible, and work on maximizing how much money you put into your pocket. But know that if you do that, you're sacrificing as much money as you could make in the long term. So you just have to be clear about what you want. I think a lot of people don't have enough data to know how to make a decision. So hopefully this gives you that data. Number two is maximize your profit and efficiency before you try to scale your business. What a lot of people do is they get to the point where they're fully booked and they're the one holding everything together and there's not a lot of process or system or organization or efficiency in place. And then they go, I can't handle anymore. So now is the time to scale. 
The problem is if you scale from that position, you're scaling a mess and you're gonna multiply that mess. And so my advice before you decide to scale is really look at the economics of one person before you try to get those economics of scale because it's just not gonna work out in your best interest if you scale a mess. So look at what you do on a daily basis and number one, try to eliminate as many hours from your schedule as you possibly can while still maintaining the same business, making the same amount of money. We often do a lot of busy work in our business. We spend a lot of time doing stuff that probably doesn't add the most value. And most importantly, we spend a ton of time doing stuff that can be completely automated, whether that's through software like Zapier or Monday.com or by hiring a VA. There's a lot you can do as a solo operator to reduce your expenses and maximize your efficiency, which does one main thing. It makes your profit per hour a lot higher. And the higher you can get that profit per hour, the easier it's gonna be when you scale your business and when you go to hire team members, you're not gonna be duplicating your mess into them. You're gonna be creating an organized system yourself and then passing on that organized system so that they're efficient as well. And when your employees are more efficient, you're able to make more profit and profit is the thing that you need to grow your business because what happens when you grow your business is you go from a solo operation, let's say you're making $10,000 a month at maybe an 80% profit margin, right? You have 2,000 in expenses and 10,000 in revenue, meaning you take home about $8,000. But what's gonna happen as you hire employees is that margin, that 80% profit is gonna go to 40, into 30, into 20, and it could go below zero if you don't have an optimized system, if you're scaling a mess, because the hidden cost that we don't see in our business as a solo operator is our time. You look at a business that's doing $10,000 a month and has 2,000 expenses and you go, oh, it's 80% margin, but it really isn't. If you had to pay someone to do the things you do, your margin would be a lot smaller. And so it's easy to think that the time you're putting in is profit, it's not. It's time that you spent and the time that you spend has a value. And so I think part of the step is separating that. How much would it cost you to hire someone to do what you do? Most of the time when you have a $10,000 a month business that's making $8,000 a month profit, you simply could not hire enough people to do what you do and still make money. Meaning it probably takes two or three people to do the work that you do because you're efficient, you work long hours. And so you're simply not gonna be making money. Your business is not profitable. You've just created a job. So before you try to scale into a business, make sure that you've not just created a job that doesn't work when you scale it. Number three is scale based upon data, not desire. A lot of people get really excited when their top line of their business is growing, as you should because it's a cool milestone. Just know that when you go to hire people or commit to any kind of recurring expense, it's a really good idea not to do it just out of hope, like, hey, I've been growing, like, let's keep doing this, without knowing your numbers. And that's why the, one of the biggest things we do with coaching clients is we get them immediately into our reporting structure, reporting on the metrics we care about. I've talked about this in other videos, but obviously that's top line revenue, profit, average order value, number of unique clients served, number of new clients per week. We wanna look at all this data so that we're accurately projecting. We're not just making a hiring decision or whatever decision based upon a good or bad month that just happened. Because you don't wanna do this either way, right? You don't want a bad month to make you fire somebody or a good month to make you hire too much. You want to scale based upon data and not desire. One of the biggest things that happens here, I think to a lot of people is most people, this is their first business that's successful when they get it to the point of making 30, 40, 50 grand a month. Well, when you've been throughout your life, however long that's been so far, used to making four, five, six, seven, maybe 10 grand a month if you're doing decently, you think 50 grand is an impossible amount of money. You get used to these big numbers in your business, and so you stop understanding that 4,000 here and 1,000 there and 2,000 there adds up in your business, and you overhire, and before you know it, you're not making any profit, and you're like, well, I'll just justify it as investing in your business, but you're not, you're just wasting money. And then on the other hand of things, you see so many big numbers in your business that your personal life starts getting inflated because you're like, Oh, we make 80 grand a month. You don't make 80 grand a month, your business does, but it's spend 70, and so you make 10. And in the blink of an eye, you could make zero if your business went down to 70. And so it's really important to be data-driven and organized with your finances and organized with your decision-making, especially as the numbers grow. You have to level up as a person and as a business owner. And here's the thing, if you don't have data, if you don't track data, if you don't know your numbers, you can't level up. You have nothing to look at, nothing to make decisions about, and you have no actual metrics. You're just going off emotion, and you guys all know that emotion is not the way to make any decision. It never helps. Number four is to rigorously focus on the things that you are good at, and sometimes this is different than the things that you like. 
And so this is a great time, even before the scaling process starts, but really a part of these five steps, to step back and say, what am I good at and why do I think that? What is the proof that I'm good at that that I can rely on? Because that's the whole point of scaling, right? You're hiring people to do lower value tasks that you can hire and train someone to do fairly easily, and you keep giving yourself just the higher value tasks and eliminating stuff. And so while you scale, your job description is going to shrink. And it needs to shrink to be only the things that you are really good at. And like I said a minute ago, this doesn't mean the things that you like. They could align, but that's not always the case. And if your goal is to build the biggest business possible, I would be really honest with yourself and maybe get some others involved to help tell you what they think your strengths are so that you know where your actual strengths are so that you're doubling down on those strengths. Because that's the whole purpose, right? We're getting rid of everything else so you can focus on what you're good at. Maybe that's sales, maybe that's operations, maybe that's building automations, and you need to hire people that have strengths where you have those weaknesses. There's an effect I've talked about before here called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And basically, long story short, it says that when you're weak at something, you often think you're better at it than you are. And when you're really good at something, you often think that you're bad at it because you know more about it. And so that's something to consider as you work through what your strengths and weaknesses are. It may actually be that you have a strength in the area you think you are weakest. And that's scientifically backed, right? Because the more you know about something, the more you know that you don't know. And when you don't know anything about something, the simpler you think it is, right? And so that explains why that happens and why it's so important to make sure that you are accurately putting your thumb on what you are good at, your actual strengths, because doubling down on those is what's gonna grow your business faster. Now, this doesn't have to be like a perfectly scientific process and you're probably not gonna nail it, but the idea is important of you're constantly removing those lower value tasks from your plate and spending more time and getting more nuanced in the things that really move the needle forward for your business and everything else is handled by someone else who has a strength in that area. And the fifth tip I have for you is I want you to both consider the single day in front of you and the decade in front of you and not a lot in between. What happens I think when people go to scale their business is their milestones and their idea of when everything should happen is all messed up. And so the biggest advice I can give you if you want to scale is you wanna focus on the day in front of you, do the most high priority tasks that you can that day and try to not do any of the stuff that is not high priority or just makes you feel good. You really gotta focus on those meaty tasks one day at a time and then the next milestone is one decade. Because if you can do that one day at a time for one decade, you simply will be a millionaire if you're not. And so that's the thing that I would encourage you more than any of these things is to think in that format. There are a bunch of different ideas out there about different goal setting lengths and I think that's all important. We are really big on one, three, six, and 12 month goals so we can reverse engineer those. But generally this principle illustrates two things that are really important, which is number one, the one day, you gotta do the stuff that is in front of you rapidly. Get that one day's task done, move on to the next day. And the second thing is you have to be long-term focused, meaning that decade. There's a quote by Steve Jobs, which is people overestimate what they can get done in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. I don't really estimate either. I just focus on what I need to do, what's the highest priority, not the easy things to do in the day ahead, the highest priority of that day, those big items that move your business forward, and then the 10 years, the one decade. Because if you can do both of those things, you'll wake up overnight in a decade and you'll have probably achieved more than you thought you would have. I certainly have, and all of the other people in business that I've gotten to know who have also built million dollar plus businesses feel the same way where they just woke up one day and here they are. And if you look back, it seems like a whole lot of work and it certainly was, but if you focus on it one day at a time, you'll wake up a decade later with a great business. So those are my five tips that you should consider when you go to scale your business and during the scaling process. It's a constant refinement process. And I hope that gave you a ton of value. I think one of the hardest things in business is scaling a mess. And so if you take anything away from this video, you should refine your operations as much as reasonably possible beforehand. Make sure you're as profitable as possible and only scale then. Remember the top line, while it sounds exciting to say I have a 50K a month photo business, is not exciting if you're doing 50K a month worth of work and you're only netting 4,000. It's a much healthier business if you're doing 15K a month and netting 10,000 and you're making more money. And so just consider that as you go to scale. Top line is important. You cannot make $20,000 a month with a photo business that only does 10,000, but you also, it is really hard to lose money when it's just you and you have a small streamlined operation. So like I talked about as well, know why you wanna scale and know what that process is going to take you through. That's all for this video. If you're going to scale your photo business and you're in the process of that now and you'd like 
like some expert help along the way, my team and I would love the chance to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. You'll find a link down below where you can book a call with us to talk more about what that looks like. And truthfully, we reject more than 50% of the people we talk to, not because we don't think we could help them, but because we only pick the people who we align with, they align with us, and we really think we can move the needle for them. And I tell you that because this is not a high pressure sales call that you're booking. It's simply a way for us to have a dialogue and see if we are a fit for each other and can work with each other to achieve your goal, which is to grow your business and scale it to the next level. And if you're just starting as well, we have programs for that. So book a call and I'll see you in the next video.